cannot be any easier for someone to buy and sell a stock. It only takes a few seconds. You just go online, you type in your order, and you send it through, and in moments you get a confirmation of the completed trade. It's that simple. And you would think this would be fast enough, but it's not, at least to high-frequency traders. Philip Budwick is the director of the Capital Markets Trading Room at George Washington University. High-frequency trading is a part of what we call algorithmic trading which is, is basically that? using uh, computer models to trade. Instead of you leaving it to human error, they're looking for patterns, they're looking for ways to use the computer to come up with ways to trade in and out very fast. Fast meaning within milliseconds, an impossible time to measure in terms of human reaction, but not for computers specifically programmed to act based on data. It scans the market and all the data in huge amounts by the millisecond. And as soon as it sees an opportunity, it sends that trade to the exchange and locks in the profit as quickly as possible. Large investment banks and the big trading firms seek out engineers and sophisticated computer programmers who know how to design and create algorithms, trading programs that can do specific data measurements their client might want. It can run on its own and all you're doing as a trader is sort of monitoring it, checking the statistics, making sure the situations haven't changed. A millionth of a second can mean just a penny of profit, but done in huge volumes all day, every day adds up for a huge firm like a Goldman Sachs or a J.P. Morgan Chase. And that's why firms are placing their hardware as close to the stock exchange as they can, known as co-locating, in order to cut down on the transmission time to execute trades, albeit by millionths of a second. TD Ameritrade's Chris Nagy. What that means is they're getting access to this information milliseconds faster than the average individual investor. This information differential prompts some investors to complain they are at a disadvantage, but Philip Budwick says that's always been the case. We have to give it to them. These are professionals with much superior technology, maybe much superior modeling uh, and um, computation skills. So of course there's an advantage, just like in the old days, the large institutional banks had an advantage over the average guy sitting at home making their investments. Businesses are hiring. Fawad Ahmed is the CEO of online discount broker Just to Trade, and he says high frequency trading adds liquidity to the market, but during the May 6th flash crash of stocks on Wall Street, when the market plunged nearly a thousand points in less than 30 minutes, it's thought that the crash could have been exacerbated when high-frequency traders decided to stop trading. And what that does, it can force a market into a free fall. And we saw that uh, in, uh, in May. Uh, obviously, we are still looking into what, what were the reasons behind it, but that is one of the things, uh, concerns that you would have. The Securities and Exchange Commission is still studying what happened that day and what the effects are from high-frequency trading. What its impact is on the marketplace, what its impact is on investors who are in, in it for the long run. And we need to understand those, um, but if the concerns are significant, uh, we won't hesitate to propose uh, regulatory approaches to deal with it. It is estimated that high-frequency trading accounts for at least half of all the equity trading done today in the United States. I'm Philip Alexio, BOA News.